is up guys, Pwn here, and today I want to talk about my Riot Shield. My good internet pal Jesper Anderson requested that I do a tutorial video on my Nerf Riot Shield, and because talking about something I've already made is a lot easier than making something new, I did not hesitate to do what he requested. So, without further ado, let's talk about how the Riot Shield got built, what it's made out of, and I'll try to explain as best I can so that you might be able to replicate it. Now, what am I talking about? Maybe you don't know I have a Riot Shield. I made one a while back. Uh, I use it for nerf battles. I think it's pretty fantastically fun to mess around with. This is what I'm talking about. A Riot Shield, one that protects you from nerf darts. It will definitely not protect you from bullets, though. Those will cut through this polycarbonate like butter. But maybe a knife. You might be able to actually defend yourself from a knife-wielding maniac. I don't know. Anyway, let's talk about how I created this. Step number one is to go on Amazon and get yourself a Lexan brand polycarbonate sheet. It's 24 inches by 48 inches. So the thickness of this polycarbonate is 1 8 inch. It comes as a rectangular sheet. Here you can see I've got the edges rounded. All I did was take a protractor, lay it on there, and then a sharpie and trace a curved edge. Uh, and then I took my Dremel and I cut that out. Uh, I then took my Dremel sanding bit and I ran it across. I, I of course got this so it was nice and smooth uh, after doing some kind of rough cutting with the cutting wheel on my Dremel. In my experience, polycarbonate more so melts than cuts a lot of the time, if, especially if you're going fast. Uh, so then I went uh, across both inner and outer edges with my Dremel and just beveled the entire thing, uh, just turning it as I went on top of a table. Uh, so it kind of makes the edges on the front and back corners much more smooth. Now when I started this project, I really had no clue what I was doing. I was just like, hey, I want a shield. Let's buy a big piece of plastic. And so when I got it, I picked it up and it was super flimsy. It was just flopping all over the place. And so the only real piece of engineering I did on this was I figured out that if you put a slight bend into the plastic, it becomes extremely rigid, way more rigid than when it's just a flat piece of polycarbonate, which is just flip flopping all over the place. Nobody wants a limp piece of polycarbonate. You want your polycarbonate rock hard. So I knew I had to create a bend in this. I wasn't sure how, but I knew it needed to happen. I thought back uh, to a time when I did some work with my dad on his house, and he was required by law to put these extra straps, these metal straps, um, on the framing to help with earthquakes. It helps connect the framing to the foundation so that the house is better able to wobble in the case of an earthquake. So in order to pass inspection, he had to use these. So I was like, oh, well those already had pre-drilled holes in them, and they were very hard straps, but still malleable enough that you could bend them yourself without much trouble. So that's what I went out and grabbed from my local Lowe's. Starting up here at the top, we've got the viewing window, and then coming down, uh, this is a metal strap. Then right here, this is actually a curtain rod holder that I've turned upside down, and that helps support the shield on your forearm. Right here, this is a gate handle, uh, and I have some pictures that I'll show later going over how this was created, but it's basically it's a silver gate handle that was painted, and then there is uh, nylon cord under here uh, and then this is hockey or compression tape and then I added this little thing just as sort of an extra this is a uh, four victory holster uh, and I added some two millimeter foam from Joann's in here just to make sure I didn't mess up the paint job on the four victory because uh, yeah jamming in there plastic to plastic would probably could possibly rub off the paint so that's how it looks with the four victory in there uh, it slides in pretty well. When I added the two millimeter foam, it didn't fit in as well anymore. So I had to uh, fix that. I actually have a heat gun, so I jammed the four victory in really far and then hit it with the heat gun until the plastic uh, expanded or became more malleable. And then after it cooled off, it fit the blaster perfectly because it uh, had expanded and then cooled down so it retained its rigidity. If you don't think you have a heat gun, you may still have one. Uh, this is another rule where if you have a girl friend or a wife, then you have a heat gun, though they call it a hair dryer that would definitely always also work in this application. Not only did it help make this plastic more malleable, but it remelted the hot glue, so I was able so it was able to press all the hot glue uh, and create a more stable adhesion. So now the straps obviously come up pretty close to the edge. Uh, I did have to cut these. Uh, it's 24 inches across, so I think these were maybe 32 inch straps, so I had to cut off. Uh, I 
used a big clamp and a hacksaw in order to do that, uh, and it took quite a while. You could get smaller straps, um, and I think I'll probably do that in the future because it was kind of a pain to cut all four of these to length. In the pictures, it shows uh, these straps were pre-bent. Uh, I bent them around a bucket, and so when I laid it down on this, this was a flat piece of polycarbonate, uh, so I put it on there, and then I rolled it to one side and traced the edge with a Sharpie, and then I rolled it to the other side and traced the edge again with a Sharpie uh, so I could get a straight edge, and that was so I could always keep it in a nice line. Uh, so then after I had sort of where I exactly I wanted to place it, I took the same Sharpie, rolled it within its confinement now. Uh, so I marked each of the holes and then uh, took the strap away and then I drilled. Uh, I'm not positive what size bit I used, but it was just slightly larger than the machine screws. Now the entire thing is held together with 1024 3 quarter inch machine screws and then I've also got number 10 washers here. Uh, I bought a ton of those because you, the, those are pretty amazing for a lot of applications. Uh, so I've just got a, a bin full of those now after going after doing this project. Uh, and I did actually have to also widen these holes a little bit with the same drill bit, uh, just so the machine screws fit in uh, more smoothly. I drilled out all the holes on here, and then I laid laid the strap down again, and then started putting in each of the machine screws. Uh, and I did have somebody help me when I helped me keep this bent as I was uh, putting the machine screws in, so it held its form. I usually only use this inside, so we're not really running around that much. There are bare screw ends here, uh, so I would not recommend running around in the woods or running into people with this because it could be kind of dangerous. If I did this again, I would probably take some Eva foam and glue it to the front of this to create more of a, a and maybe the edge even, to create a safer shield, maybe for use out in the woods. But for its purposes, it does its job pretty well. And its current job is to completely block a doorway and prevent anyone from either entering that doorway or firing through that doorway at your teammates. I painted the handle separately, but everything else, I gave a little spritz on each of the screws, uh, the metal strap after it had already been fastened. I hit it with some this Krylon rust protector. Uh, this is metal spray paint, and this is a fast enamel. And then for everything else, after I'd already painted all the metal parts, I left all the polycarbonate uh, untouched, and I went back over it with a few coats of uh, vinyl dye. I don't have a can of vinyl dye right now, but if you're an avid YouTube nerf watcher, I'm sure you've seen a can of vinyl dye before. Then after I was done uh, with the vinyl dye coat, I hit it with a couple coats of clear coat. Alright guys, well that is it for me today. I just wanted to do a quick sort of tutorial, just in case you wanted to build this thing yourself, just to give you sort of a head start. Almost everything except the polycarbonate sheet was purchased at Lowe's, uh, so you can you can go on Amazon is where I got the polycarbonate sheet. It's not cheap. I wasn't really looking for a budget build. I just knew that I wanted a big shield and I wanted it to be strong. A lot of people build stuff out of cardboard and that is probably just as practical honestly it might get beat up after a while but protecting against nerf darts I'm sure cardboard can handle nerf darts just as well as this can I hope you learned something from this tutorial and I hope you build your own let me know if you do in the comment section uh, link to some pictures or send to my email uh, pontatoes at gmail.com because I would love to see your own builds that is enough blathering seriously I'm seriously done get out there build your own one of these and have a great time protecting yourself from nerf darts